Hello there. I saw the Antichrist. He is here already. The one who is supposed to take over the reign of the world in a one world government is here already, as scripture describes. He is here already. The Lord showed me, and Jesus is coming back very soon. The Lord Jesus told me he's coming back very, very soon. It is much more imminent than we ever thought. I'm going to be sharing with you a very pers- some very personal prophetic uh, dreams and visions about the return of Jesus. But what I want to focus on today is the Antichrist, that I saw the Antichrist, the Antichrist. Before I do that, I want to let you know uh, I, have, I have an agenda. The agenda is for me to remind Christians, for us, every one of us, to keep our garments pure or to keep our oil overflowing and then to keep our lamp burning because we never know the day or the hour when the, the bridegroom will show up. And if you are not a believer, if you have not followed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the time is now. There will come a time when it will be announced on CNN, BBC, and all the major news outlets that there has been a sudden disappearance of Christians from this world. It's going to happen very soon. And I tell you, I tell you this, it is not something to joke about. It is not something to joke about. It is very, very serious. A major catastrophe is going to be set. It's going to come upon the people who are left behind. It's not a good thing at all. It's not a good experience. I'm not saying this just to, if, if it means to scare, I'm not to scare you. No. This is what the word of God says. And we've been seeing the signs all around. Pointing to us that the end is here. I want to say a number of things before I actually share the dream. The prophetic dream that Jesus asked me to share uh, this morning. Uh, one is that we have this uh, uh, return of Jesus summit happens around the uh, March, the month of March every year. It's been like six years we've had that conference. It's a virtual conference where we have uh, um, ten um, uh, different speakers from uh, within Canada and some other places around the world, and uh, they speak on the return of Jesus and the end time the eschatological message etc just to uh, focus on the on, on the on this subject area this doctrinal area and then we want i want to encourage you to join to to uh, how you how can you join through the website uh, ruemi.org www.ruemi.org you can join you can uh, sign up for that conference uh, it's coming up again in uh, march the second thing i want to mention quickly um is that we are trying to encourage uh, leaders, uh, Christian leaders and church uh, leaders to see the month of March as a time when there will be a deliberate focus on the teaching of the return of uh, Jesus in the churches to get them ready and, and be prepared. You know, a, a deliberate focus on that in your church. Try to uh, deliberately focus on teaching about Jesus returning, Jesus coming back. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the, 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 the third thing I want to mention is that um the lord specifically told me to speak to christian leaders about this message uh, you know not now it's been a couple of uh, times that the lord spoke spoke to me and asked me to ask christian leaders to begin to focus on getting his people ready for the for his return praise the lord the fourth thing i want to mention is that the end time message the end time message is not a distraction from the focus on the revival message I know many of us are expecting the revival of the Holy Ghost. Um, I don't like to use the word revival because what I believe is coming and based on what the Lord told me and a number of other ministers, it's not the repeat of the old order, of the old things. It's not the revival of what the Holy Spirit has done in the past. It's a brand new thing. And it is consistent with the end time message. In fact, the um, the, the texture of the, of the end time move of the Holy Ghost, I like to call it the move of the Holy Ghost, is flowing from what will happen at the end time when jesus takes his believers away i mentioned that at the last conference that we had i'm going to share the video for that conference uh, later on um the next thing i want to mention is that so i i, I said that because i i listened I, I listened to a preacher 
who actually said on the pulpit saying that uh, uh, people should not be distracted by what uh, uh, the Jesus, uh, Jesus is coming that uh, oh the end is here they know that the end is not here God has business for us to do God has business for us to evangelize uh, uh, as uh, the Holy Ghost there's going to be a, there's a prophetic utterance there's a prophetic message about the revival of the of the Holy Spirit that's what we are expecting so I want to caution us uh, as leaders as Christians Christian leaders or preachers not to um, um, not to put the Holy Ghost in a box. The Holy Spirit has the capacity to run through strategic messages at the same time. He has the capacity to uh, to promote the message of his uh, of his move, the powerful move of the Holy Spirit, the revival. He also has the capacity to to push the end time message at the same time. There's been hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube about people having personal encounter. When Jesus is telling them that he is coming soon, he's coming soon. And when preachers begin to say that, oh, no, don't worry. No, 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 the, the, the next thing we want to focus on is the revival. No, it's not a distraction from revival. The end time message is not a distraction from revival. Praise the Lord. Now, the, 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 the next thing I want to say is that um, the, this video that I'm doing now, it's coming out uh, from uh, November 17. The Lord uh, spoke to me and he asked me to, um, he wanted me to be alone and then speak. Uh, so he wanted me to be, so I went on a personal a personal retreat. Um, coming out of that retreat in a dry fast, I was expecting something different. I wanted to hear from the Lord what he would have me, uh, some of the things I pushed forward to him. Um, but this is what he asked me to do now. This is what he asked me to do, to do this video um, about this message. And then the last thing I want to mention is that believer, be prepared. Again, be prepared, be ready. If you are not a believer, all you need to do is to repent of your sin and ask God for forgiveness and receive Jesus into your heart. Ask your Lord and Savior. The time is now. The time is now. The next minute might be too late. I may not finish this video before Jesus shows up and takes his believers away. I may not. I just pray for myself as I pray for you that when Jesus shows up, you will not be left behind. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to, I'm just praying. I'm, I ask the Holy Spirit to help me so that I don't sound like a preacher when I begin to narrate these experiences with you about the Antichrist. I pray that God will help me. Holy Spirit, I ask for your help this morning in Jesus' name. That I don't really sound like a preacher, that, that I may be able to narrate what I have seen uh, in a way that people will understand and that they will come to the, a conclusion in their mind about the truth, about your truth in this message. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You see, um, December 6, 2016, December 6, 2016, I was, um, um, I never read anything. I was not reading at, in that season, at that period, I was not reading anything about Revelation. I was not focused on Revelation. I was reading other parts of the Bible and I was just, the thought of Revelation, the thought of, uh, um, the end time message was not even in my mind at that I was just focused on other things. I do straight preaching. I do other things. Um, I woke up from this um, dream vision. It's a prophetic dream. And um, December 6, 2016, the scene of the uh, vision was somewhere in... Um, in the Middle East, it was like a river area, like a, um, by the sea. It was like by the sea. What the Holy Spirit uh, told me in the vision, I believe it mentioned the country, the, the name of that country. But for some reason, I'm not going to mention the name. There are some things I will choose not to say. Amen. Because I don't have a release to say, to say them. Amen. So I, so this setting 
it was like by the river, river bank and there were two fishermen um they had just caught a big fish they were going to sell this big fish to another man and this man that was going to buy this big fish was going to pay twenty dollars remember i said it's in the middle east and is by the river bank and now they're going to pay twenty dollars to buy this big fish so as a transaction conversation was going on i began to see the fish it was looking very weird so all of a sudden the fish began to change its form it began to change to like something like a bear like a bear like a lion like all sort of wild animals just changing its head it's a fish it's lying on the ground it's been caught and they were going to sell this fish so as the conversation about the transaction was pro progressing i could hear a sound a very a kind of i don't know i don't know how best to describe this sound like a musical sound like building up into a climax so as soon as the 20 dollars was paid for this uh, transaction uh, for this fish that fish that was changing its head into different wild animals and i was telling them oh this fish you don't want to eat this kind of fish this is not this is not a good fish this is not something you, you want to eat it, it doesn't look like something edible that you can eat and when i said that it began to change its head began to change its uh, change its form and then um as soon as the twenty dollars was paid for this fish the fish that was changing its head turned into a, uh, a man he got up he became a man a giant man he became a giant man and he began to the first thing he began to do was to say blasphemies against god he began to blaspheme he began to say blasphemous things i could know he was saying i don't recall vividly the things he was saying but he was cursing god and he was blaspheming he was saying blasphemy blasphemous things against god and he proceeded to move away from the shoreline into the uh to the mainland as he was moving away um somebody around was like oh some two men when they saw what had happened they knew that this was not good uh, uh, for the society so for the community that if he goes into the mainland it's going to cause a lot of trouble imagine uh, i don't know if, if you know this uh, uh this movie uh king kong uh, when king kong emerged and maybe wants to go to new york city something like that you, you can imagine the extent of damage it will cause that was the kind of mindset that was uh that, that the people had so two men ran after this uh, beast they ran after this beast and then uh, they tried to stop him from going into the mainland so he pushed them away with one hand and they hit the wall they hit the wall and they fell down and they, they began coughing so another man saw what had happened so okay somebody call 911 let's call 911 the beast this giant man this beast retorted and said uh, i'm going to lock them up i'm going to lock the police up as soon as he said that i woke up from this strange vision and um, the first thing that came to my mouth that came out from my mouth spontaneously oh my god what a dream wow oh, what a dream and i was like oh it, it, could that be the antichrist and the holy spirit reminded me and i, I had a serious migraine like and I, I don't have migraine but now i had a serious migraine and i was like what's going on it, it was clearly sending a message to me and the holy spirit reminded you remember joshua you read uh uh, uh a scripture a story of a fish coming out from the river I said yes so i don't know the reference of this so i went on google to google based coming out from the river it was revelation 13 
essentially um, the Lord was showing me the Antichrist, the, how the Antichrist is going to live and going to join the, uh, going to uh, begin his reign, being revealed, was showing me the revelation of the Antichrist. So that was it. The, in my 2017 book uh, on God's instruction, I put that story in that book. The book is called The Final Flight. I'm going to show you here. It's on Amazon. The Final Flight, Joshua Adetunji. If you want uh, to to read it, you can always get it on Amazon. I described that vision in 2017, uh, in this 2017 book. So, fast forward, 2020, August 11, 2020. August 11, 2020. Um, I want to give you the background of what happened before this uh, uh, dream vision so you understand very clearly. A friend of mine, uh, because it was during the pandemic uh, lockdown, everyone was uh, when, um, we were locked down and then we were, uh, it brought everyone together. So people that have not spoken for a long time, uh, they began to speak to, to one another. So a friend of mine, an old friend of mine, we began talking on the phone. Um, uh, he lives in the U.S. and we're talking on the phone and uh, so sometimes um, we talk about politics, we talk about our faith, etc. He's a Christian too, a good Christian. And so we were talking about the conspiracies around the uh, COVID-19 and the, the um, conspiracy um, being floated around that um, uh, Bill Gates had something to do with that uh, uh, COVID-19 that they want to depopulate the world that is what people are saying so we were on the same mind that no that's not essentially true because uh, uh, Bill Gates uh, does a lot of uh, um, medical it's, it's charitable work it's focused on medicine like uh, health health care and it's been doing that my friend mentioned to me that oh polio vaccine in Africa has almost eradicated polio in Africa. Nobody blamed uh, uh, Bill Gates for that, but now they are calling him that uh, he caused the pandemic, etc. So we didn't believe that. And then in the process of that, my uh, my friend also said uh, that was the same way they called somebody else the Antichrist because people were calling the calling Bill Gates the Antichrist at that time. So he mentioned the public figure. It, just, it was the same way they called him the Antichrist. And this fellow ended up not being the antichrist and at the end of it all it wasn't the antichrist after all and i agree with him again because i didn't believe that person was the antichrist amen so then later on this friend asked me to do something for someone else um he asked me to um somebody was looking for information on immigration and he asked me to send uh that uh, to help me help him help that person about so i did and i copied him in the email saying that oh uh, this is what you need when it comes to immigrating to canada etc and my friend later on was calling me to thank me for helping that fellow that I, that he really liked the way i took my time to give full information about what it is. so he was just thanking me for that and since he could not reach me, I guess it then he sent me, he left me a voicemail, I believe, and he sent me uh, a message saying thank you, etc. At the end of the message, he also sent a link uh, to a new story. This uh, background is very important, so you under, understand the context of the dream I want to, of the vision that the Lord showed me. I want to, I want to share with you. So he also sent a link. To a new story showing that Bill Gates, uh, thanks to Bill Gates, polio had been eradicated in Africa. Thanks to his effort on polio vaccine, it's been eradicated in Africa. So he was sending that to confirm what he said earlier that it was not right for people to call Bill Gates the Antichrist. And I'm not saying that Bill Gates was the Antichrist in this place. In this uh, video, I'm just making a reference to that, and it says just like the way they called that other fellow the Antichrist, he ended up not being the Antichrist. These conspiracy theorists can just be weird in their thinking, 
and because uh, in their thinking. So I agreed with him that that fellow was not the Antichrist, neither is Bill Gates the Antichrist. I agreed, right? I believe that uh, it was just a conspiracy. So he also repeated that in the text message, WhatsApp message that he sent me, that yeah, that's, that was why they called this man the Antichrist and it was not the Antichrist. So, so okay. Then I went to bed that night. When I slept, I saw a twin dream vision. The Holy, I believe the Holy Spirit deliberately interjected my thought, my flow, my flow, my, my frame of mind on that subject. And here's what I saw. First, in the first uh, vision, I saw the beast that I um, saw in my 2016 vision. Now, this is in 2020. Four years earlier, the beast that I saw in my 20, the Antichrist I saw, I saw him again in another dream vision. And this time around, it was like in an open area filled with people. And I saw that man, which my friend said, uh, uh, whom my friend said is not the Antichrist. To, to which I agreed that this man they're just is just a conspiracy theory and they expected him to manifest somehow that is the Antichrist but at the end of it all he's not the Antichrist so I saw this man so in the open crowd the, the, the open uh, space with a, filled with a lot of people the only person that stood out among the crowd and this beast was hovering around that person and people did not see the beast was hovering around that person that person was hovering around the Holy Spirit zoomed my attention to that person it was the same man that my friend had said that is not the Antichrist which I agree to now I now caught somebody by the side somebody that I knew I called them aside I said look secretly I told them I said, look, look at that man. Look at that, uh, that, that uh, look at the beast that I described in my 20, uh, uh, that I saw in 2016, which I described in my 2017 book. That's the same beast standing beside this man. Look at that man. Standing, this is a popular, a famous uh, kind of a, a known public figure. Look at him standing beside that man. That's the same beast that I saw in my in my book. Look at him. That's the same. And the the dream ended. Then there was a second vision, like a twin vision. When you see two twin vision, it tells you that it is what God God uses that uses that to tell you it is true, and it is very what what is saying is very imminent. You know, when it tells you that it's suggestive that what what, what the Holy Spirit is trying to. Uh, impressed on you what I'm telling you it is true when you, when it happens like that twice so I saw a different one a related vision that same night and there was like a big um, event a big event somewhere with a crowd of people and there were speakers so one person came up I don't want to say what that event is because I don't want to give away uh, for some reason I want to not mention who that person is, who this public figure is, um, and I don't want to give some details that would that would suggest it's that person. So I won't say what uh, that event. Uh, I know what the Holy Spirit showed me what the event was. So I I so I saw several speakers went up to speak. That same man that the Antichrist was hovering around. When it was time, they called him up on the stage to speak. When he got up and he was going to mount the podium to speak, the Spirit of the Lord drew my attention to the hem, the hem of his garment, the hem of his garment. At the back end of it, there was a, like a split skirt, like a woman's skirt that is split. And the Spirit of the Lord told me that he is not... Uh, uh, 
what is public is public persona is public image is it's not what he said what he, what he pro- professes to be his identity is different from what his real identity is different from what is known about him in the public and of course his gender as well no not necessarily sexual orientation etc it's not it's not um, the same and i woke up from that clearly it was it was imp- i believed very strongly um if that man is not going to be the world leader world the the antichrist is going to be one of the um, um one of the um one of his big emissaries that he will use to accomplish um his reign seven years uh, time of great tribulation which will begin as bible says begin with the first three and a half years with deception will deceive the world in a false sense of peace i believe that uh, that man has a role to play if he is not the antichrist and i believe he's the one so fast forward 20 then when i woke up from that dream vision i called a pastor friend of mine and i spoke to him about this and he agreed he said he said he believes it because the reason why i called him because when we were in, in his house uh, a couple of years back he made a reference to this man he made a reference to this man and he told he said um it's not uh is a most uh, he, he, he made a reference to this man i don't want to give details about the reference he made that was what prompted me to call him after the dream to say why did you did you see did they did you see that from your vi- visions uh did, did, did the lord show you about that about this man uh, or you got it from the so he said he got it from the news and he was impressed on this he got it from uh, from from the uh, whatever from observation that he was impressed in the spirit that this man is not um the identity he put forward is not exactly i don't want to say specifically so um and he agreed with me that he believed that what i saw was true uh, from the spirit i believed everything was true that yes and even daniel maybe reminded me remember daniel in the book of daniel talks about um um, this um, it give two identity two different identity about this antichrist is not going to be a lover of women it's not going to be it's not going to have desire for women it's not good uh, and of course religion will be you know all sort of i don't want to go into details amen now fast forward to 2023 november 20 2023 that's about a couple of days ago like two three days ago yeah three days ago i saw this beastly giant again i saw this beastly giant again now before i go to that let me say that after the 2020 vision where i saw uh in a uh, sorry twin vision uh, twin dream twin uh, um um, dream vision about the same antichrist after that the lord showed me like three different times again that man in that re- in that identity three different times in the dream god showed me that and then the um and then after when i did a video i did a short video at that time saying that i know that the antichrist is i didn't mention his name after i did that this man appeared to me twice and he got talking with me twice as if kind of a so i know what i know you know what i know i know you know what i know but as if telling me you know don't be careful you know things like he came to as if like a child he challenged to challenge me in a dream like twice that man so fast forward to 2023 november 2023 november 20 2023 that, that was three days ago i saw this beastly giant again this antichrist i saw him again now the scene is the great tribulation itself and christians many christians were hiding 
in a big mansion, like a secluded mansion, hiding in a secluded mansion. And I was there. This was, God wanted me, probably wanted me to have that experience to know so that I can know what it feels like. I was there. And it was in a different mansion. I was in a different uh, building with my family. And then the, uh, the, the base commanded the person who was holding the door behind the behind the mansion was holding locking the door in which uh, uh, keeping the uh, many christians away from the so apparently what he's doing now is now going personally to places and visiting places and fishing out christians etc so he stood outside of the of the big mansion and he commanded that man to open the door and when they refused to open the door and they wanted to call the police call for help something like that he said I will kill all of them. That's what the man said. Something similar to what he said in the uh, uh, previous vision that I, I shared with you. He said, I will kill all of them. I will kill all of them. And when they would not open the door, this is what he did. He transformed himself into a long pillar of fire. And he raged with a big fire, a giant fire. And he walked into the wall of the building. He walked into the wall of the building just like that. As soon as he entered, the Christians were now flying from different directions, running away from that place. And it was impressed on me. There was no, there was no escape from that man. Then in my, in our, in the other building where we were, we locked the door. My wife went to get the kids. I, uh, so wait, where's my, where's my little boy? So let's carry, you no, know, let's be prepared. So that when it's coming, it's probably coming to our building next. And um, so that when it goes in, we can run the other way. Then I woke up. I believe God was showing me that to let me know that. Not uh, to to help me to feel what it would feel like if I were left behind, if my family were left behind. And it's also saying the same thing to you. As Christians, we need to be ready, keep our garments pure. Um, um, keep the oil flowing. That would be like the the wise the five wise wise virgins the scripture describes and be ready for the coming of jesus it is not worth it to be left behind it is not worth it i want to plead with you if you have always been ignoring this message about the end time that jesus is coming soon as a preacher i want to encourage you not to do so again because one way or the other you might be actually um, frustrating the effort of the Holy Spirit to get this message out um, to people who need them, to the believers, those who are already in the fold. The revival that we are calling for is about the whole point of that revival is to bring more people into the kingdom. How about those who are already in the kingdom? The Holy Spirit doesn't want to lose them. That's why we ought to embrace this message um, it's not a distraction. I want you to please share this message with as many people as possible that you have. And if you are not born again, you are not a child of God, you, are, you have not been born of the Spirit of God, attending a church or being having a religious mindset is not enough for you to qualify for the return of Jesus. It happens only when you confess your sins to God and you ask God for forgiveness and based on the sacrifice jesus made the sacrifice of blood jesus made on the cross of calvary it is on that basis that you have redemption that you can be forgiven and you receive jesus as your lord and savior not just believing you believe jesus and you follow him you follow his ways you follow his ways i can do that with you right now and i believe every time the bible says in romans chapter 10 it says it's with our mouth I say, with our heart we believe unto salvation, with our mouth confession, uh, with our mouth we believe unto righteousness, with our mouth confession is made unto salvation. You need to believe in your heart. Say, if you believe the Lord Jesus and that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. On the third day, Jesus rose again. That's a clear evidence that everyone who believes in Jesus will not perish but they will have eternal life eternal life 
know, we'll have eternal life. I want to pray with you. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this uh, time. I confess before you that I'm a sinner. I was born into sin. And the fact of things I do, I repent of them. I repent of every sin now. I ask for your forgiveness. Lord Jesus, I ask that you come into my heart as I make you my personal Lord and Savior. From today, I am born again. I am a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. If you made that prayer, I want you to please find a good church. It's very important to associate with people who are of like minds like you, who believe like you, and be ready at any time Jesus might show up. May God bless you. May God keep us all until Jesus returns. Amen. Thank you.